Cisco ASAV VPN. This will be the base remote access VPN. This is now to help support you know, um, the folks that have to work from home now due to COVID-19. We're seeing a rush uh, in regards to getting people ramped up and, and working from home securely and safely. So what I've done is I there's a previous video that showed you a base ASAV setup, just the you know the interfaces configured, etc. Um, licensing. And then here what I'm gonna do is walk through getting a, a single tunnel group up and running on, on two boxes and um, just local user account for now, right? We're just trying to ramp up and get this out the door so we can get certain people working from home. And as we go along, I'm gonna add additional capabilities like ASA VPN load balancing, like um, integrating with MFA two-factor authentication, like adding umbrella to secure those endpoints when they're remote. So this is the base setup for, for the VPN side. And I'm just gonna walk through the wizard, right? Really easy. Go ahead and give the connection profile a name. What interface are we terminating terminating on, which would be the outside? Here, I'm just gonna use SSL. I, I wanna optimize the box too. Um, and the more you have running on it, the more options, obviously the more taxing uh, of resources. So here I need a device certificate. Now, this is where you would typically have a signed uh, CA from a trusted entity. I, I don't have that in my lab. So I'm just gonna use the self-signed certificate. You would get this signed and uh, by either, you know, your internal, uh, your internal um, Microsoft Certificate Authority, or you would actually go externally um, and get it uh, signed by an external entity. So here, we'll just generate that self-signed certificate. And again, to get up and running quickly, you might use this, right? You might use the self-signed um, to get up and running just to get people access, obviously educate them on you know, it's not signed, this is just a temporary measure, and then get that certificate signed afterwards. Okay, so we've got that now on available, and, and so we'll move on to the next pieces. Here's the client image. This is, uh, we're, we're, our, I've already downloaded the AnyConnect client. This is, I'm only adding Windows here, but if you had other operating systems that required other images, obviously you would download those as well. The goal of this is to, to you know, alleviate some of the pressure IT is being faced with. And one thing to consider when you're building out this VPN piece and you start shifting the load coming into remote access, just based on experience, I can tell you that I've seen companies kind of ramp up for that. They've added licenses, but the underlying infrastructure doesn't support that amount of uh, throughput coming in running their entire business through that VPN and all the network components that are required here. Now here I'm just creating a user because all I have is admin on this box, right? This is a fresh install. Um, the one thing to note here is just to go back in to the, the user management and, and make sure that they have uh, zero access to the box itself. Now remember, this is local, it's just quick and easy to get up and running. Here we're gonna select a pool. Now in the next video, I show you the architecture a little bit more in detail. But this one here, we wanna have a, a pool for this device. This would be different than the pool on the other device, right? As you start spreading out the load, depending on again how you build this, we've got a lot of options. You can do, you know, HA. Um, you can also do uh, DNS load balancing. And then you can also do ASA VPN load balancing that's built into the box. The, the example I'm going to show you because it's easy to scale that solution out is ASA VPN load balancing. 
and and that's the next video so give this a pool give it a name give it the IPs that you're going to distribute enter your DNS servers here now you might have to do NAT ex exemption if you're using this as a firewall in my case I'm not this is a hundred percent going to be used as a, a concentrator talks about uh, any connect uh, client deployment and here's your summary finish now that's it right apply it save it right you got remote access VPN operational at least for that one user or you could add a couple more users to that um, local um, user store I'm gonna walk you through normally I'm not gonna walk you through a second instance because it's very much the same but I am gonna walk you through because there's the one difference around the IP pool so and it honestly we're five minutes in and we've already got a, a remote access VPN box up and running and ready to terminate now I'll, I'll do a quick test at the end to show you that it is working so again we're gonna use the the wizard it's gonna walk us through we give it a name this will be the same as the other box outside interface optimize the connection I'm just gonna use SSL and that's not clientless VPN remember right that's just SSL VPN from any connect got to add a certificate here again um, in my case I'm just using the um, self-signed you're going to use a, a, a trusted uh, a th certificate authority to sign it whether that be your internal Microsoft um, CA or you, you go to an external entity all right we're going to add the client image here so you can see it's all the same thing but we want it duplicated so if you're going to use in my example we're going to use network or sorry VPN load balancing and every box is going to be as you add them right and again there's a limit I want to say 10 boxes that you can do or at least test it they, they don't the, Cisco doesn't say that um, um, beyond that it wouldn't work it's just what they've tested to um, and if you use something like ASA v50 you know that's 10,000 per box at maximum right you never want to run at maximum but 10,000 times the number of nodes right or 750 times the number of nodes so we've got um, the image there uh, for the client again you would download additional clients for different operating systems if you needed it I'm adding a local user account here on the box as well remember go in and make sure that you reduce the access because by default it gives it uh, level 2 I think or priv privilege level 2 here's where we're going to create a pool again this is going to be different than the pool in the first ASA and here we use two the other one we used uh, one so 172.16.1 is for ASA 1 172.16.2 is for ASA 2 again the goal here is to help you ramp up your remote access capabilities to help with COVID-19 if you need licenses um, you need uh, virtual instances for example reach out Cisco's done a really good job of helping enable customers very quickly get ramped up with some free licensing in certain areas whether that be uh, duo any connect uh, an umbrella to make sure that we're secure um, for 90 days to help you get up and running and, and working so what we've done is we've went to the portal we've logged in it says hey download the client if you want to connect um, again quick and easy I go ahead and download the client once the down the clients downloaded we'll go through the installation And you can see here like I'm taking it from the base all the way through I'm not shortcutting anything right 
Now, there's some things I would do differently, like sign the certificate and things like that. But you know what? Our, our IT leaders or the business leaders have come to us and said, look, we need 15 people out now to be able to work from home. Well, look at, we're spending about 20 minutes here, um, maybe 30 in total, and we can have this up and operational. And then we can start to tweak it, right? We can add layers of security. We can add different tunnel groups. We can start leveraging Active Directory. But now we've got the base. The base is ready to go. If I need to scale out more as I start ramping up more, depending on my deployment model, in, in our case, we're going to focus on that VPN built-in load balancing capability. I just need to deploy another ASAV, right? Go through the same steps. A lot of copy and pasting just with some subtle changes uh, from the config itself. All right, so it's part of, almost the longest part now is just to get this installed on, a, on an endpoint. So now we have it finished. We could close this page off. Start. Any connect. That's one of the nodes. What we can do here is maybe start with one. And we could do two. I'm not going to show you both um, in this case. But um, in the next video, when we start doing some load balancing, I will go between the two. Log in with sales. And look at that. Terminated, right? Ready to go. You can see here the IP, the client IP is 172.16.1.1. So we know we're on ASA 1. And let's just ping here. And there we go. It just took a little time. I'm also working from a very remote location with satellite internet and I'm RDPing in. So things are a little bit sluggish as well. Um, and that's it, right? Now we've got remote access. We can help our users work home from safely or work home safely and, and still be connected and get access to the resources they needed.